the black suns and the red moons, the signs and the Moedim. The phenomenon of solar eclipses has come up thus far twice. The space we have here will allow for a little more detail to be given. We have noted that the ancient rabbis saw solar eclipses as signs of judgment. The reference is found in the rabbinical writing Sukkah 29a. Our rabbis taught when the sun is in eclipse, it is a bad omen for the entire world. Our rabbis taught when the sun is in eclipse, it is a bad omen for those who worship idols. But when there is an eclipse of the moon, it is a bad omen for Israel, since Israel reckons time by the moon and those who worship idols by the sun. Now, of course, solar and lunar eclipses are natural and regular phenomenon, as determined by the relative movements of the sun, the earth, and the moon. And the rabbinical writings do not carry biblical authority. But there is a biblical basis for connecting the darkening of the sun and moon, in specific circumstances, to judgment. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, for the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. Isaiah 13, 9, 10. For the day of the Lord is near, the sun and the moon will grow dark. Joel 3, 14, 15. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Matthew 24, 29, black suns and red moons. The events spoken of in these passages are not regular or natural occurrences, but apocalyptic events. Added to that, a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse cannot naturally take place at the same time. The scriptures speak of the sun and the moon and the celestial lights functioning as signs. The Hebrew word used in Genesis 1:14 is otot, it can also be translated as evidence, mark, and omen. The same verse declares that they will be connected to days and years and seasons. But the Hebrew word translated as seasons is modim. Modim literally means an appointment or the appointed time or the appointed meeting. It is the same word used for the holy days of Israel. Add to this the scripture's emphasis on these celestial lights as signs of judgment and the end times. And we have to, at the very least conclude that they may, at times, serve as signs of significant events. With regard to lunar eclipses, it has been noted that a unique series of four such eclipses are to appear from the spring of 2014 to the autumn of 2015, each on a Jewish holiday. They have also been called blood moons because of the red color they acquire in the midst of the eclipse. The occurrence of four consecutive lunar eclipses, each on a Jewish holiday, has taken place only six times in the last 2,000 years. Three of those times have been associated with pivotal events in Jewish history, the expulsion of the Jewish people from Spain, the rebirth of Israel, and the regaining of Jerusalem. Is there any possible link between these occurrences and the Shemitah? Aside from its first six months, this series of blood moons or lunar eclipses will all take place within the coming Shemitah or its autumn wake. One lunar eclipse will take place in the Tishri that begins the Shemitah. The next will appear in the spring marking the center of the Shemitah. And the final one will take place in the Tishri that ends the Shemitah and marks its climactic wake. But what has often been missed is the significance of the solar eclipses in regard to their timing. The Black Sun and the Harbinger We have noted the link in timing between the darkening of the sun and the Tower of Ground Zero. As the fourth of the nine harbingers, the tower already constitutes a sign of judgment. But, as we have seen, at the time the tower reached its full height, on the day the tower was crowned with its spire, the sun was darkened. The tower was crowned on the day of a solar eclipse. Another attempt had been made to crown the tower two weeks earlier, but the endeavor had to be abandoned because of the heavy gusts of wind at the tower's summit that day. The date was April 29th. On the anniversary of the first attempt to crown the tower, on April 29th of the following year, the sun was again darkened. Another solar eclipse linked to the timing of the tower's ascent, the black sun and the Shemitah. The phenomenon is not only connected to the tower, but on certain occasions to the Shemitah. The darkening of the sun has, at times, converged with the Shemitah's climactic end. This does not mean that an event of significance must occur at such a time. 
The convergence happened in 1959 with no apparent corresponding event of significance. On the other hand, when the sun has darkened at the time of the Shemitah's climactic end, it has more than once signaled an event of great significance, and an event that just happens to take place in the same realm appointed by Scripture concerning the end of the Shemitah, the financial realm. The Black Sun of 1931 in 1931, a solar eclipse took place on September 12th. It happened at the end of the year of the Shemitah. On the Hebrew calendar, the eclipse took place on Tishri 1, the same day that ends the Shemitah. And that begins at the moment of the Shemitah's climactic conclusion, at the sunset of Elul 29, the moment of financial nullification. Eight days after the convergence, England abandoned the gold standard, and set off market crashes and bank failures throughout the world. The darkening of the sun at the Shemitah's end ushered in the greatest month-long stock market percentage crash in Wall Street history, the Black Sun of 1987. In 1987, a solar eclipse took place on September 23rd. It happened at the end of the year of the Shemitah. It took place on the exact day of that end, Elul 29 the climactic day of financial nullification. Less than 30 days after that convergence came perhaps the most mysterious collapse in Wall Street history. The Black Sun had ushered in Black Monday, the greatest percentage crash in Wall Street history. Again, the sun's darkening at the Shemitah's climactic end had brought the greatest of financial collapses in American history. In terms of the proportion of the market wiped away, the convergence of the Shemitah's end with the black sun has marked both the blackest month and the blackest day in Wall Street history, the coming black sun. Most of the coming Shemitah will take place in the year 2015. During that year, there will be two solar eclipses. The first will take place on March 20th. On the biblical calendar up until sunset, March 20th is Adar 29. From sunset on, it is Nisan 1. It is the precise midpoint of the Shemitah year. Thus, the darkening of the sun will mark the beginning of the sacred year and the Shemitah's exact center point. The second solar eclipse of 2015 will take place on September 13th. September 13th is Elul 29, again the very of day that constitutes the Shemitah's climactic end, the day of nullification. As it did in September 1931 and again in September 1987, it will fall on the Shemitah's climactic end. In the past, this ushered in the worst collapses in Wall Street history. What will it bring in this time? Again, as before, the phenomenon does not have to manifest at the next convergence. But at the same time, and again, it is wise to take note.